I'm back. Where have I been? Not to worry. As you notice, there's a new setting behind me. A lot's gone on in the last two months. And I did take a little bit of time off YouTube. But I'm back now and I've got so many new videos to film and lots of big plans for you guys. I'm really happy to be back and I thought I would make my first video of the new year, 2019, a life update video because so much has happened in the last few months. So yeah, I just thought this we could do a chatty video. Um, if you're new to my channel then it'll obviously be a little bit of a get to know me. So first things first, new background and that is because I uh, feel so lucky. I've moved house, I have moved in with my boyfriend. It's amazing, it's not been without its stresses though. This is probably the biggest life change since I last got on YouTube to be fair, so let's start with that one. We are actually filming in my office. I now have my own office studio in my flat. I feel so lucky, it's bloody massive and you will actually see everything inside it in my upcoming flat tour on YouTube, which is uh, being filmed next week. So yeah, moved in with my boyfriend. <laughs> Some would say it was fairly quickly. I would actually say it happened really fast. I'm not gonna say it was like out of convenience, but it was. there was an element of that. Um, also, you know, it just kind of felt right. We have been together now 11 months, so almost a year. I asked him to move in with me in November, which is a, quite a while away now, but I knew that I had a break clause in my contract at my flat in my last place and I thought if I didn't move and hand in my notice in the next month I'd be tied into that flat for another year. I'm 30 years old, he's 31. You know, we're just at that stage in our lives now where we're looking to make more permanent choices I think. You know, when I was with my boyfriend of six years the idea of living together never even came into it for six years, you know. But being at the age I am and just, you know, looking at things for what they were, I plucked up the courage to ask him to move in with me. It took me months of thinking about it, like, I was thinking about it for a really long time, I knew the break clause was coming up, and I was like, I should, like, think about moving, I need a bigger place, because I work from home, the one bed wasn't enough, having all my work stuff in my living room was just a nightmare. So, I was like, oh my god, what's he gonna say, is he gonna say no? He's actually lived with his ex-girlfriend in the past, so he has lived with a partner before, I have never lived with a boy. Ever. So I was a bit like, oh, I don't want to do it. I really value my independence as well, um, my alone time. I like things just so, like how I like them. I mean, he's laid back anyway, I'm not. So I thought, you know, let's see how, like what he says. So I just casually asked him one night, I walked in from the bathroom, had my toothbrush in my mouth, and I was like, oh, do you fancy um, moving in with me? Because I'm going to hand in my contract, my notice, and we can get a place together. He was just like, looked up from his phone and went, yeah, all right. I was like, okay. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> we found a flat really quickly. It's in a really nice part of East London by the parks. Really nice community around here. My yoga's down the road. There's loads of nice coffee shops. The place is massive. I thought I had a lot of furniture. Turns out when I moved in, I don't have that much furniture, so I've spent a lot of money, or should I say we have spent money, like, getting this place kitted out. I've been collaborating with a lot of brands and they've been giving me some nice things as well to put in my home. It's really come together now and I feel really like settled and happy here. It really was blank canvas at the beginning and I was trying really hard to like get everything done in a minute and my friend Linnea texted me she's like Emily it takes years to build a home not like not minutes and I was like yeah well you know I just want it done because that's what I'm like. <laughs> it's finally finished everything's in place. Adjusting to living with a guy though He's not as clean as I am, like when I fold the towels just so and he goes in to take one, I'll look at the towels afterwards and they're like <clears throat> When he cooks he'll clean, he's really good cleaning, but then he'll leave like a fucking smudge on the cabinets. <laughs> I'm not perfect by any means, but my cleaning stands are high. I work from home obviously, he comes home every night. He likes his alone time, he likes chilling, he's an introvert like me. He does value just like vegging out in front of the TV after uh, a day's work, which I totally respect, but I don't really, I'm not a fan of that. Like, I'll sit down and watch TV once or twice a week, but every night, that's not my thing. Just kind of finding our routines, I guess. It was really mad. We had, like, a housewarming party as well, which was crazy. And it was Nate's birthday two weeks prior and Valentine's Day, then the housewarming. It's just, it's been mad. So I feel like March, middle March is, like, the first time we've really been able to just, like, and actually find out what it's like to live with each other day in, day out. All good so far. I'm really enjoying it. There is one thing that I don't like though, and it's the sleeping issue. I'm used to sleeping in my own bed. My parents say the reason I can't share a bed with someone is because they wrongly put me in a bed as a one-year-old in a big double bed to myself. 
so I'm a bit of a diva when it comes to like sharing a bed I can't do it like I wake up so tense my lock jaw is crazy I'm, I wake up with like really sore muscles and it's not even the fact I don't sleep I do sleep it's just I kind of like in my head subconscious somewhere I know someone's next to me but trying all sorts of things I found some really great methods actually having my own duvet really hurt, helps for one I was thinking about doing a standalone video on how to get better sleep because I feel like I'm a bit of an expert now as you can see I've cut my hair if you follow me on Instagram you'll already know about this because I did it back in December but this is the first video I filmed with my shorter hair took all my extensions out I love them but I just wanted to give my hair a little bit of a break just cut it a lot and like give it give it best chance to like get healthier. I've been going like between these two lengths for the last three months. I really like it. I've got actually got a hair appointment this week. I'm gonna get my roots done blonde again and probably take it up a little bit. But yeah, really enjoying the short hair. Do you know what? It makes me more accountable for what I wear. Having long hair, I feel I love it. I think it's super feminine and I really like how I look. It makes me look prettier, I think. But having short hair really makes me pay attention to what I put on my body. It makes me style myself a lot more. It makes me, makes me make more effort. Because without that long flowing hair, I technically don't look as automatically pretty so I'm making more of an effort with how I dress and stuff I've been getting it done at Paul Edmonds um, I had my first cut and colour at uh, Larry King's salon in Kensington with Redken and then I went to Paul Edmonds for the second time going back to Paul Edmonds in Battersea the salon's gorgeous I've been on a bit of a crazy I don't want to call it a diet I don't want to call it a detox I don't, I don't know what to call it. I guess I'll call it like fitness plan. Fitness and nutrition plan, I guess. December was a free-for-all, like food, booze, partying, you know, just excess, excess, excess. January hit and everyone's like, oh, dry Jan. I'm like, dry who? No way. I need the alcohol to get through January. And then we move. February is like the most social month ever. Valentine's Day, Nate's birthday, housewarming. I've been keep cooking these meals a few times a week that are like huge and, you know, playing the good wife, I guess. As a result, I put on a few pounds. Also, exercise went out the window. So I was like, fuck that, I'm getting myself together. I was noticing my body was like swollen, my joints ached, I was a bit fuzzy, my energy levels were like that. Also, my, my, I feel like my emotions and my hormones have been all over the place, albeit it has been an emotional time. But I decided I need to sort myself out. I've had three months of just eating and drinking whatever I want and not exercising that much, so I got myself a personal trainer. He is old school. He knows his shit when it comes to the body and how the body functions and the quickest way to turn a body around. I also talk to him about what I wanted to achieve not just in terms of aesthetics because that really wasn't my priority when I started this plan it was feeling better being more mobile standing up straighter he put me on a two-day um, plan at the gym and I had to work out two other days that week we could do like yoga or boxing whatever I want so I was doing that and then he said Emily I think we should do the, a two-week plan where you basically cut out sugar, alcohol, caffeine, and have pretty much a zero carb diet. I'd say I'd say low carb, nothing zero carb. He was like, do it for two weeks. A lot of my clients do it and you will get great results. I'm gonna talk more about this because I have filmed a fitness vlog, which basically is me vlogging the entire two weeks. So I'll show you the progress and how hard it was. I'm almost at the end now, but it was really, really tough. And I didn't wanna do it because my social calendar is like full of alcohol and food and, decadence. Um, so I picked two weeks that were like relatively clear. Me and Nate haven't been dating in two weeks because we literally can't go out to dinner without wanting a glass of wine or like eating what we want. So I've been preparing, well we've both been preparing all our meals at home. Yes, Nate's on it too. For moral support, but I know he wants the results as well. It's day 11 now and I am seeing a lot of results. So if you're interested in that, then you can watch the vlog that I'm doing on my 14 day plan. Last year, I was really lucky. I travelled a lot with my work and this year I wanted it to be no different. My travel plans I've booked in so far I'll share with you. Hopefully I'm going to Miami next month which will be so cool. I've never been to Miami but from what I've seen it just looks like the most beautiful like I wouldn't say beautiful actually really cool incredible place with like awesome architecture and like just a really cool atmosphere. I also grew up really close to Miami in Puerto Rico, so I dig those Latino vibes massively. I feel so at home. Me and Nate are going on a surf yoga retreat. We haven't actually chosen which one that we're going to on yet, but we want to do one in May time. June, I'm going on a retreat 
in Ibiza, a yoga retreat, which will be lovely. I'm also going to Primavera Festival in Barcelona with my two friends, Anna and Scarlett. We'll be staying in an Airbnb in Barcelona. And then July, we're going to Provence, which is it's been a dream of mine for ages. Nate got me the sweetest gift for Christmas. It was like this beautiful custom made box with like little like boarding pass in it, custom made boarding, boarding pass, like a sprig of lavender because of the Provence fields. And oh, he just put so much thought and time into it. It was beautiful and I cried when I got it at Christmas. But that was a gift, my Christmas present, a trip to Provence. That for me is gonna be all about just immersing myself in French life and culture and taking in the lavender fields and doing doing some painting, hopefully writing some poetry, reading a lot of books and eating a lot of bread and cheese. So really looking forward to that. Then I've got my sister's hen do and then I've got her wedding. Oh, sorry, should I say her first wedding in middle of July in Edinburgh. They're doing the, red, the vows in Edinburgh registry office and then they're doing the Sussex countryside wedding oh, two weeks later in July. Hopefully I'll get somewhere in August. September I am going to another retreat, hopefully in Morocco. It's not all finalized yet, but putting it out there. And then I will be sailing around Montenegro with my best friends on Med Sailors. <laughs> Oh my god, that seems like a lot. I really need some sun, it can't come soon enough. I asked you guys um, to send me some questions earlier today on Instagram. Anything you wanted to know? Let's look at some of the questions you guys sent me. Someone's asking me, how have I been able to sleep <laughs> with my boyfriend yet? Yeah. It's getting better, I am getting used to it. The first week was hell, I didn't sleep at all. But I'm definitely getting used to having someone next to me. How am I dealing with my stress and anxiety at the moment? Well, I took some time off, as you guys know, to really like de-stress. Actually, it turns out I got more stress. <laughs> Moving was really stressful and then as a result not working for quite a while or like doing the bare minimum actually gave me quite a bit of anxiety. I think I'm that type of person or at least this is the type of job when you stop it makes you more anxious if you're not working all the time. When I'm like on the ball every day getting shit done that's when I'm I think my most least anxious but probably more stressed. When I'm not stressed I'm probably anxious because I'm not working. I can't win. How did I meet my boyfriend? I think I'm gonna do a dedicated boyfriend chat on here for you guys. I'll get Nate in if he lets me and we'll sit here and we'll, we'll talk about how we know each other and, and how we met but just so you know we met on a dating app which I'm I'm really into. Someone's saying am I enjoying being 30? You're a few months into it now. Yeah I'm like 10 months into being 30. I'm 31 soon. I can't believe it! 30 has probably been the quickest year of my life, I'm not joking. Like most women, I was really anxious about turning 30 and what it would mean for me, like where I was in life, my life goals, what I wanted to achieve, you know, it really is time to reflect. But once you're over that milestone, it feels so much better. I can't even explain, like the anxiety goes and you just kind of throw your hands up and be like, hey, it's life, like 10 years time I'll be 40. It's almost like a stamp on your forehead reminding you to live your life to its fullest. 30 is nothing, like, when I tell people that I'm 30, they're like, what? 30 is like, there's so many connotations with it, but no, there's no set way to be 30. Like, I do whatever the hell I want, and I'm 30. Like, as long as you're a responsible adult, and you're nice, then do what the fuck you want, right? So 30 is fine, if anyone's worried about turning 30, it really is absolutely okay. Once you're over it, smooth sailing. Someone's asked me what my favorite earring company is. I do wear a lot of earrings. I think most of my earrings are from Astrid and Miu. If you have a look here, this is Astrid and Miu. These two are Astrid and Miu. Other ones I have are like basic Topshop hoops. Peniel Corridon I love for hoops. Matthew Calvin does some really nice like simple earrings. Ottoman hands as well for more like ornate bohemians. That's my life at the moment. Things are crazy, busy, and I'm loving it, and I'm adjusting to living with my boyfriend, and it's all good, I cut my hair, and now I'm on a fitness regime. As usual, things are never ending. I'm sure it'll be a whole different story in three months time. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Leave all your questions for me in the comment section. You know I love to start a conversation with you guys. Anything that you would have liked to know, about me or what I've been up to in the last few months, leave it below and I will answer it for you. Yeah, it's really good to be back. You'll see more from me back on my channel really, really soon. Bye for now.